Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Okay, so it's just a catch up on how the party went last night. And this is the second video of the new year. <laughs> I hope you all had a wonderful and safe uh, New Year's last night. Um, so if you haven't heard already, or if you're just catching up, I was doing the catering for my church's uh, New Year's party. Now, I did not charge them for this because I'm not a professional caterer and I wanted to do something for my church. And the first thing when I had volunteered to help was, um, the first thing they said was, we're on a budget. So I said, okay, whenever I hear budget, okay, this means all hands on deck. We need to be like as cost efficient and everything as possible. So I said, um, she's like, well, we haven't really found a place and, you know, we're thinking of doing this catering and, and from this other company and things like that. But I, if I don't know who the catering people are, um, sometimes you get very nervous because you can either get something really good or you can get something really bad. Last year, the person who did it was a wonderful cook and she was a parishioner at the church as well. Um, her, de her husband was a deacon at our church. Uh, they have since moved away, but she was an amazing cook and uh, she did, you know, she always did the parties for them and that's cool. Uh, so I had volunteered when it was during the summer to do the cooking. So I said, sure, you know, I'll, I'll do the cooking, you know, it's no problem. And they were like, oh, are you sure? And, and so I'm like, yes, you know, that's, it's, it's what I like to do. I love cooking. I love, you know, medical coding and I love cooking. Those are my two favorite things. Um, but yeah, I said, yes, you know, this is not something that, you know, I'm not going to charge for the church for it because I didn't think that that was right. And so um, we had decided on beef burgundy. Okay. So which if you haven't seen it yet, oh my gosh, I posted it on Instagram, <laughs> the video I did uh, because I had brought 10 pounds home with me to cook before um, I had to cook the next day at the church, which was um, on New Year's Eve. So everything was going in the crock pots and everything was, was working out really well. But she kept adding, um, the, the church administrator, she kept adding people to the list. And she was like, well, we have 10 more people. Now we have 20 more people. And so roughly there was about maybe 120 people there. I really think there was 130 people there, to be honest with you, because it didn't look like it was only like just that little bit. It looked like there was 130 people there. So she kept... She, I, I know it's because she didn't really know if I could pull it off because they don't know me very well. And, um, but they do know that I can cook. It's not that I can't cook. And, and so I think that part of it was they were just nervous about my abilities to be able to do whatever. And so I kept trying to reassure them and I was like, okay, well, the only thing that is going to be able to help them is if they can actually see it. Um, my thing is when I'm cooking, I need to be left alone. That is like, I, I understand what chefs go through. I'm not a chef. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that I am. I just like cooking, but I can honestly say I understand now why chefs are very particular about who's all in their kitchen because people that were in the kitchen yesterday, that were like trying to help or whatever during the prep time that were in my way, I could tell. And it was just like, it was very uncomfortable for me because it was just like, okay, I can get this done. I need everybody to get out of the kitchen. I just need everybody out of the kitchen, you know? And so uh, I spent a lot of the day yesterday having to kind of like get people to get out of the kitchen because in order for me to work and do the things that I need to do, that's what I need. I need that peace. And so, uh, you know, finally it worked out. Um, I brought in my <laughs> mini cheesecakes, which, um, uh, she had told me not to bring in because they, she said they had dessert all under control, which I didn't see anything out there other than the cake. Um, and I thought it would be nice to do something a little bit different, um, uh, than cake. So I brought the mini cheesecakes and I had the, um, cherry pie filling on top of those. So I did some caramel and some with the cherry pie filling. So, um, that is another one <laughs> that I will do because I can't wait. I totally saw another ep another recipe for, um, it's like a cobbler, a cherry cobbler that like 
you can make it in the crock pot. So I'm very excited to try that. That's going to be on the next um, potluck that I do at work <laughs> or the next cooking that I do at work is totally going to be on the menu to do that. Uh, that in a la mode mode. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll post pictures of that <laughs> when it's time. Uh, but getting back to the day. So, you know, the, the, the church administrator, she was like, well, you know, are we going to run out? Are we going to run out? I'm like, we've got five crock pots going of this stuff. We're, plus, we have a vat already of it prepared, uh, the beef burgundy. It's it's handled. It's it's taken care of. So that morning when she showed up, um, she, everything was like already starting to cook. And I was prepping and I was still chopping and everything. And she's like, oh, it smells so good in here. And I said, would you like to try some of it? And so when she, she tried it, she tried this one piece and she's like, Oh my God. She goes, this is so good. And she goes, Oh, she goes, Oh, the meat is so tender. Oh, of course, you know? So, uh, she's like, okay. So I think she, she went between everything's going to be okay to panicking, you know? And so I need that energy away from me when I'm trying to do what I, what I love to do. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, everything worked out, and uh, during the day, she would come in, and she would check the other pots when I was trying to get her out of my kitchen. I'm like, get out of my kitchen. Just get out of my kitchen. <laughs> but as she was checking, she goes, oh, Blue, you must give me the recipe, because she tried it again, and she's like, you have to give me this recipe. It's so good. So <laughs> when uh, we got the pans all out and everything, and everybody was mentioning that they could smell the food, the aroma of the food as soon as they came in. It just smelled heavenly. So it was the beef burgundy with mashed potatoes and um, green beans and corn and rolls. And then we had hot appetizers, which was the chicken wings, the meatballs, and, um, and then these little... I didn't personally want them there um, because I'm not a big fan of these. Anytime I do things, I like to be elevated and I like to make sure that it's classy. It's what I would put out. However, um, she had insisted on these. She wanted them, which was the little um, pigs in a blanket with the little cocktail weenies with the puff pastry. I didn't think they were so great, um, but she wanted them. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, I just threw them in the oven and they didn't come out. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the, I don't know how to make those. I don't make those things. I make other things, you know, like I said, my level is here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I like, I like to make food that is good, that is tasty, that is not this processed stuff. I like to cook from scratch. That's what I like. That's what I know. That's how I know how to cook. I don't know this other processed stuff, you know? So thankfully I had called a friend um, and she came to help me and I was so grateful that she was there because uh, at by the end of the night with all of her well with all of the other nervous energy that was around me I really needed a friendly face so when my friend came I was like oh my god thank, you, thank god you're here and so she she helped me and uh, she tasted the food to, beforehand I said I need to taste this I need to know how it is and then she's like oh my god <laughs> she's like it is so good and uh, so she was very excited that she got to, to try some. And so we, we were, I mean, everything was pretty seamless. We did not run out of food, which was good. Uh, the only thing that did run out of was the rolls, okay? And the other rolls that I did not approve of <laughs> were there uh, because I had told her to get some more garlic knots. And she said they were all out. She could not get any more garlic knots. And she got those, those ugly little... Um, it's those rolls that are like, they look like little discs. I don't know how to describe them. Um, I don't even know. Like, they're the ones that nobody wants to eat. <laughs> like, that's how I feel. Like, the rolls that you want to eat look like they came out of, like, a, a muffin cup. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, those are the kind of rolls that I like with the little clover lo clover leaf looking things. You know, that's the kind of rolls I like. I don't like these little disc looking things. Like, what the heck is that? You can't even put butter on it. You know, it's just like it's hard and it's, no, I don't want those. And so 
she still brought him anyway so i was like okay you know what, whatever i'm over it at this point <laughs> i am so over it i did what i was supposed to do which was make this food it smells amazing that's all i can do from here so everybody raved about the food like literally everybody raved about the food they were like you made this you made this and i'm like yeah really and i'm like yeah and they go oh well they must be paying you a lot of money to do this i said no i'm i'm not getting paid for it and they go you're kidding and i no, this is something that this is a, my gift to the church this is not um something that i wanted to to charge for this is not that uh, when i give i give from my heart you know what i mean there's no there's never an alternative mo ulterior motive with me ever if i do something it's because i want to it's in my heart to do it and it's not because i want something in return and there are so many people that want things in return and i am not one of those and i think sometimes it shocks people because they're like well that's so much work and why would you do that well why not do it you know and if i know if i do it it's 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 going to come out right because I care. I care. I like doing things. I like, you know, I like cooking because it's such a, um, it's such a way to bring people together. Like you should have seen them when they were like eating this food. They were like, oh my God, what did you do to this? You know, <laughs> this one man did come up to me. He goes, I don't want to insult you. And I said, okay, you know, well, what's up? And then he's like, but I like a lot of pepper in my food. And I go, oh, okay. Well, I said, I did put pepper in the um, beef burgundy and I did put pepper in the, in the, um, in the uh, green beans. And he goes, yes, but I like pepper in my mashed potatoes. And I go, ah, okay. And he goes, if you don't mind, can I get some pepper? I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll bring you some pepper. And so I said, you know, some people are real particular about seeing little black things in their pepper. I mean, uh, black things in their potatoes. You know, I think potatoes should be white. <laughs> uh, some, sometimes people don't like to see pepper in their potatoes. Of course, I know there's white pepper and I could have gotten white pepper. But to me, it was just like an unnecessary expense because people, some people don't know about white pepper. And so I was just like, OK, well, that's another thing to think about in the future, you know. And so I had used parsley on it, which it looked really beautiful. I'm sad that I didn't get a picture of it, um, but I didn't get a picture of it. So I was like, okay, oh, well, you know, what are you going to do? And uh, so I, um, you know, learning all these things and in retrospect now, um, just reviewing everything, everything really, really well. And considering that, you know, I have no formal experience you know, cooking for this many people. Like the most I've cooked for was like 70 people. So this is just going to up my game. And now I know, um, because they had, some of them had their sort of very smug look like, Oh, well, are you going to do this again next year? Like, mm -hmm, like, you know, like I wouldn't want to do this next year. And I said, yes, I actually would want to do this next year, but now I know what things to, uh, to do. There is making sure that there's crowd control on the lines and maybe releasing a couple of tables at a time only uh, instead of like letting everybody rush the, the table stands, which is what happened. And then maybe doubling the pans so that we have like one pan that is always full. And then if, the, if that pan runs out, then there's an, the next pan and then there's time to run and grab another pan and the line is still moving. So. I think that would be a good idea for next year um, also or for this year. So also uh, maybe getting some of the youth group to come in and volunteer to do like um, to serve hors d'oeuvres, you know, because we did have the hot hors d'oeuvres and then we had the um, the chips and everything else, which the, the four bags of chips that we had just completely just were obliterated. <laughs> they were just completely gone. And so uh, we know for next year that there's going to be more chips that are going to be needed. So, but like I said, getting maybe getting some of the youth group involved so that they can learn um, proper, like, like proper um, service to their fellow 
man, you know, basically. Uh, and I think it's something good to teach to teach the young people because a lot of times they don't have those social skills when they're getting into those older stages in life. And then you get these 18, 19 year olds that don't know what to do when they're out in the real world. Um, so I think teaching them younger to, um, you know, how to to be of service to others, I think is a good thing. So um, I think that if they do allow me to do it again, uh, that I would say, well, let me get some volunteers from the youth group to like maybe be in black pants and a white top and uh, make sure that they're walking around with, you know, trays of hors d'oeuvres. I think that would be a really good idea. Um, and I think it would be more classy, you know, classy. <laughs> Uh, another thing I would do probably make sure that there's a salt and pepper shakers on the tables. Also make sure that there are plenty of coffee pots running because that was another thing too. Uh, there was people asking for coffee. So I made sure that I did have the coffee pot going. Uh, they kept coming up to the window and in the kitchen and, and as we were trying to clean up, um, and then pull some of the other trays out they kept asking for coffee so I just did make sure that there was more coffee so maybe filling the carafes would be another thing uh, that would be good you know to always make sure that there's a carafe of coffee out so that people can have their coffee uh, because keeping adults awake <laughs> that are used to being asleep at that time <laughs> uh, is is a little bit of a chore <laughs> you know sometimes so the band was really good though I was really really surprised with the band when they came in, um, they had wonderful music and they played really good with um, the guitars and the vocals and everything was like really good. So it was nice though. But I will say this, by the end of the night, oh my gosh, my feet were done. Like literally my feet were killing me. And I was in such pain because I had been on my feet since five o'clock that morning like literally like running around with the crock pods in the house and then taking them excuse me to my car and getting over to the church getting them into the getting them into the social hall and then running around in there finishing the setup <laughs> so by the end of the night when i'm like laying there i did not stay till till the till midnight there at the social hall i did not uh, about 11 o'clock, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out, you know. And so, you know, she was really, she was like, oh, no, Blue, stay. You should stay for, for the ball drop dance. Sit and have a good time. She kept begging me to come out and sit and, and be with them. And which I wouldn't have minded, but my whole thing was to make sure that everybody was taken care of with the food and everything. And then making sure the food got put away and stuff that was very important to me because I didn't want anything to go to waste I didn't want anything to go bad and I just wanted to take care of it all because to me it's just part of it you know whenever you are whenever I do do like cooking um, even at work I I will make sure that you know everything is cleaned up and put away and that's just always part of it that's whenever you're cooking that is what you do you know so at least that's what I do uh, <laughs> and, um, but yeah, those are just some of my ideas, I think, that I would do for this coming year, um, but everybody loved the food, and they just kept coming up to me, and they were going over to my friend, and they were telling her, they go, is she a professional caterer, and she's like, no, she's just a parishioner, you know, she was just doing it because she wanted to, they go, wow, you know, she cooks, like, really good, and they were, like, really, really surprised, and so I think, when it was all said and done and, you know, the church administrator was just like, wow, she's like, okay, you know, and then she, she knew that she could relax and stuff and, and that everything was good. Everything was under control. So, <laughs> but like I said, uh, just a few things that I would do differently because I know now, um, and those were pretty much it, but I mean, I still will always do things in service to others. And I think that that's important. I think it's important to do things with a giving heart and not expect anything in return, which is the way that I do things. Because I have been, I've had that happen before where people do stuff that it's nice and, and because all because that they want something or, or whatever. And I mean, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen to other people and it's just like, you know. So I always want to be one of those people that does things just because I want to do them. And there's n there's no ulterior motive. You know, and that that's just me, you know. 
And that's my thoughts on that one. <laughs> so, but it was a fun experience. However, when I got up, I was so stiff. I was like completely like I had, like I had been put through a ringer, you know, completely. Uh, but it was, it's all right. It's a good tired, you know, you ever hear those people that say, oh, I, I am tired, but it's a good tired. It was a good tired, you know, <laughs> so at least I had all day to recover. And these last four days, like from the weekend and then Monday and Tuesday, and then today, it just feels like, like an alternate universe. Like I feel like I've been away from work forever and I feel like I've been, you know, just it, like on permanent weekend this last five days, you know, that's what I feel like. <laughs> it's been like one really long weekend, like weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> That's what it feels like. So I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> but like I said, I would do it again. I would totally do it again. And I know what I would do this time. And I know that what I would want. Absolutely. So that's it. That's my thoughts for the day. But yeah, that was me catching up. Um, there's a lot of things that I have planned for this year as far as like the channel and channel growth and everything and of course diversifying my episodes uh i will be doing episodes where i'm going to be doing like cooking with me uh that has been requested a lot and i am going to meet the demands of the people so <laughs> i don't mind doing that uh especially when it comes to sharing about cooking um i just cook in a way that i think that most people would enjoy um, I don't, I don't, I like to cook like down home. That's what I like. And, oh, and this one lady, she came, she came tearing in screaming. Um, I have a wheat allergy and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I didn't cook with wheat, I swear. And so she's like, well, I can't have anything with wheat. And I was like, okay, well, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. She goes, how did you make this beef burgundy? So I, I'm telling her all the ingredients and I, and I gave her the can of the ingredients that I did use. And she goes, this has wheat. And I go, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know, you know? Um, I said, but there's plenty of other options out there. There's chicken wings and there's, um, there's meatballs. And she literally walked off on me. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, um, it's not like there was a special request thing. I mean, if I would have known there was somebody with a wheat allergy, of course I would have made, uh, some, some sort of, you know, special meal for, for her, you know, I mean, that would have been fine. Um, but I didn't know. So, you know, I was like, well, you can't please all the people all the time. You know, that's what I thought. And so I was like, I mean, I feel bad for the lady, but I mean, she didn't have to get mad, <laughs> you know, but anyway, so that was my <laughs> episode for today. So I, right, yep, I got about 10 minutes. So I will go ahead and uh, upload this very quickly and I will see y'all on the next episode. Bye.